this is history. What you've done, what it shows. You guys have built a platform that influences. Be out of it. It's the world's most dangerous morning show. Breakfast up, breakfast good. DJ Envy. Envy playing my record, I made it. Jess Hilarious. Jess be with She don't spare nobody. Charlemagne the God. What made you think the liking of controversial questions would take his part? I like this show. Thanks, Breakfast Club. Good morning, USA! Yo, 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 yo,
Right, just Salute the bearded society 2.0, baby. And you have fun out in Colombia. You know what Colombia is known for, right? The number one thing it's known for, right? Cocaine. <laughs> I was, uh, talking, I was talking salsa dancing, but yeah, cocaine too. It said number one is salsa dancing. That's what it's. I don't. Anyway, well, have fun out there. Be safe, bro. Uh, I appreciate it. All right, man. The Breakfast Club. Get it up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on the Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? This is Lynn from Columbus, Ohio. What's up? Hey, What's up, girl. Man? Peace, Lynn. I just got, listen. I got a question for y'all, real quick. Envy and Jess, do y'all love Charlemagne? Absolutely, girl. What? Listen, if y'all really love this man, why y'all keep letting him look homeless in these pictures with these celebrities y'all be taking? Huh? No, I'm tired of these homeless socks with the hobo socks with the what's the one picture last week? Just be trying to hide his flip flops. Why, 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 really why you why you homeless shaming people? Girl, just be trying even, to hide his stuff. Girl, listen, even I'm with homeless the... shaming you, you. Charlemagne. Okay. Uh, oh, she's I'm trying. such a fire. Envy, at least take your shoes off. Let Charlemagne take the picture first, right? And then I know Taylor be editing real good, so she can edit you in the picture. Envy, and we'll all be cool. But I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, for real. Wait till you, see, wait till you see me this morning, girl. If you saw this homeless Scully that he had on the bed, <laughs> he got he, he got a nice outfit on, girl. He took the she takes the shoes off as soon as he walked in here at five fifty nine. I like to be comfortable. Yes, and you be seeing these pretty deep wispy ass sweaters he be wearing. Okay, I see the lens. You see, I never <laughs> post those pictures. Envy always coming in here looking like you know it's Sunday's best, and he and Charlamagne just be one girl. No, Char- I like Char- to be comfortable. Okay. No, it's not about comfort, Charlamagne. You've been comfortable for 14 years. That's right. Yeah. All right? That's you right. You got the face done. You're looking good. Out here trying to look like Morris. Ow. Morris would not be wearing no slippers like that with no hole in their side. Girl, and they be too big. The slippers is like a size 12. Two size girl. big. Two, yes. two sizes too big. Hey, his toes be gripping the front of the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liz. <laughs> I'm glad I can make your day this morning. <laughs> oh, she said your toes be gripping the front of the slide. Yeah. <laughs> Shay, what up, Shay? Good morning, y'all. Get it off Good your morning. chest, Shay. No, okay, so I wanted to say something about uh, the dunk yesterday. day. The mom who sampled with the little boy's juice. Yes, yeah. ma'am. The little boy who was stealing the juice should have got dunked the other day. Because why you stealing that child's stuff? If that, you won't steal it, you wouldn't have been drinking that, it. That's what I kind of said. I'm like, keep your keep your stuff. Don't be stealing my stuff. And this happened. It seemed like a lot. He was bullying the kid. Yeah. He was 10 years old. They lucky the mama didn't put Miralax in it. They that, talking about pepper and lemon juice. It should have been some eggplant. He was 10 years and old, the little man. boy on the toilet. Yeah. He was 10 years old, man. 10. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Ten or nine. He's bullying at a young age. I agree. Don't be but, bullying. I agree. But the, right. the adult should have known better. The, the, there was another way for her to handle that. Yeah. Well, Shay? You, you probably know yeah. why Charlamagne was probably that kid. He probably was the kid that was taking somebody else's Gatorade at, at 10 years old. He looked like he was still in Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been on the toilet with diarrhea. <laughs> Thank you, Shay. All right, y'all. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious. Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. See murder. Claudia Jordan. Claudia Welcome. Jordan. What's up, fam? What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? How are you? How are you? I'm tired. Wow. You tired. should be. You, you, you just got out of hell. Mud. Uh, <laughs> You've been diving over things. <laughs> that show, well, I guess we're here to talk about uh, Deal and No Deal Island. So it was really crazy. And I had to be in a tent with four other people. Mm-hmm. And there were snakes. There were centipedes. Mm, it yikes. was really rough. And it was like Survivor meets Deal and No Deal. You where dr- was it? I seen you drive into a mud. Where, yeah, where was it? Uh, it was in Panama. But not oh, like okay. where it was developed. It was very much like in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And so they threw all these people together. And basically $200 million was up for grabs in the woods. How so, much? Two hundred million. Hundred million. The biggest game. Two hundred. Yes, that's why I did it. So, 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 <laughs> wow. so, so for somebody to explain it, break it down. So they put checks or money in briefcases. Right. Do them all over the forest. So the, the, it's the Bankers Island. There's a helicopter. They drop off all these briefcases. They have different dollar amounts. From it could be five dollars all the way up to millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. So we have to build the board up. So we have to go and find. In the beginning, you're all working as a group to build the board up because the last person standing is the one that plays for the big money. But you can eliminate people along the way. So if you don't like someone, you could just be like, I'm taking you out. Like, I won my game. I'm taking you out. Damn. So it's conniving going on. You have to be good at the challenges. And socially, you have to be, mm-hmm. you know, on point. This is great for you. Oh, man. You know, <laughs> I, I, I highly recommend you don't miss next week's episode because I had to let this old Karen have, have it. <laughs> real, real like. Now, is that the old Karen that 
I don't know her name, but her is that the, the old woman that yeah. y'all had to help her in the mud? Because Man, it was all cap. Really? Cap. Mm. That was smart. But see, see, the lady was old, so she made everybody else go get her stuff because people felt bad for her. She oh, wasn't no. that old. She was only 12 years older than me, but, you know, we have melanin. <laughs> <laughs> I guess y'all not friends anymore. So age I kept saying, I'm like, we're only 12 years apart. <laughs> we're 12 years apart. I kept letting it be up. throwing it out there. I mean, you know. <laughs> $200 million. So you can't say if you won yet, huh? I can't. Mm. I did see some lobsters with some oodles and noodles the other day. <laughs> some lobsters. There, some, there haven't been some changes. She did fly private here, just to uh, let y'all know. I mean, there's there, there been, there been some changes. There's been a few changes. But, um, yeah, so definitely this uh, this week, you definitely want to catch this week's episode. Mm. There's a lot of fireworks this week. Like, I definitely, Seymour was definitely there this week. And Dylan, no, you was, weren't you on that back in the day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the yeah, pilot. Yeah. Okay, okay. I did four years on that, and um, that was the highest. Rated show on NBC since Friends. We would have like wow. 13, 14 million viewers a night. So it was a classic. They wanted to bring it back, but then they mixed it with Survivor. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard. But they had civilians. As, like They would know the celebrities on there. Mm -hmm. Well, Boss and Rob, he won Survivor like five times. Mm -hmm. So he was on there. But everybody else, they was Googling before we got in the jungle. Like saying, like, you shouldn't be here because you already have like a good life. And that kind of caused a little bit of tension. I'm like, so it's up to you to tell someone else that they've had enough success for you. Right. So that kind of happened. Yeah, and two hundred million dollars success is different than like, I, I don't think anything. Like, come on. Yeah. So, so, what made you want to do this? Like, what was the call about? Like, what's two hundred you know, million? Two hundred million. But yeah. Really, that was it. Yeah, I'm trying to retire. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. You know how much I work? Yeah. I'm like working a lot. You know, I feel like we have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially as black women, like we got to do like twice as much sometimes. Um. Well, deal and no deal has always been sentimental for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on this since the pilot, mm -hmm. and I feel like. If they're going to do a show about Deal or No Deal, I'm damn sure going to be a part of it because it means a lot to me. Like, it was a big part of middle America really, like, knowing who I was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that show. And it seemed like it would be fun. Mm -hmm. It was Athletic challenging. stuff that you had to do. Did you train for it? I did. We yeah. had to do a swim test. You had to, like, really, like, be good at, you know, holding your breath in the water. There's I no mean, way Karen passed that, Tim, that swim <laughs> test. There's no way. You'll leave Karen Why, why people not swim? Huh? They're not a swim. Now, if you would have seen her trying to get through the mud, you would be like, I, I don't, I, I'm surprised she passed the second episode. Yeah, how did yeah. she even make it? So, you've it seen here? the first episode. Mm -hmm. You saw how the, the, the poker player helped her out yep. and it kind of messed himself up. Mm -hmm. So, mm. I, I just feel like, like, why are you doing yourself a disservice by mm -hmm. doing that? Like, you, you changed her trajectory of the game because if you didn't do that, she'd have been out of there the first episode. And she kind of does, like, a lot of backstabbing stuff mm. you know, mm. on the show. So. It does get a little testy by next episode, I will say. Yeah. Now, how long did y'all take for? We were there for three and a half weeks in a jungle. Damn. I had 100 bites on my legs from one day. Uh, Sand fleas, mosquitoes. Yeah. And we had to like take um, medication before we went out there. We had to oh, take uh, anti-malaria medication mm -hmm. because you can really, you know, Panama, that's where it really went down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had to get all types of shots and yep. stuff too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest thing you had to do? What the hardest obstacle? Um, the hardest thing I think was day one. Because we're thinking, like, I thought it was going to be a cute little game of go find the cases in the woods. So they just tell you, they don't really tell you what's coming up. So they'll say, go around the corner, you'll see the cases. I'm like, all right, cool. You don't know what you're up, you're in for. You remember the movie, um, the Coliseum? Um, Gladiator? Uh, Gladiator, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. When they just, you don't know what's on the other side of the wall. They just open up the gate and you have to just fight with mm -hmm. whatever's in there. They let us go into this pit and the very first step you take, you're waist deep in mud. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And you don't know. And have you ever tried to navigate through mud? No. That's waist deep. That has Jeez. centipedes in it. So it's really physically challenging. Yeah. And then you have the backstabbing element. So it's like mentally you have to be sharp, mm -hmm. physically you have to be sharp, and then socially. Oh, so there's people trying to take you out. Yeah. So say you're in the bottom two of that challenge. million, bro. Yeah. Say you're in the bottom. Say we're in the yeah. bottom two of the challenge, mm -hmm. right? And um, one of us has to play the banker. Say it's you. Mm -hmm. If you make a good deal, you get to stay on, but you get to take out anyone else that doesn't have immunity. So you could just be petty and just take out someone that you think is like a, a strong competitor. Mm -hmm. If you make a bad deal, then you go home. So with that much money on the line, you're going to like do whatever you like. You're going to be grimy about it. So there's that that's happened. Like last night, the brother got taken out by the old, like, the old white lady. And it was really mean how she Dang. did it. She was saying like, every, like he was so sneaky, but she was a sneaky one. Wow. She was, it doesn't seem safe. Let's see, you're talking scorpions and snakes. It doesn't but, seem. Um, like, there was you some had concerns. to sign off on this? I, we did. And while we're there, I go, I don't know. If, I don't know about this. Like, I could probably die here, but you know. <laughs> Did anybody get hurt, hurt, like hurt to the point where you had to take them to the. People the, got bit by snakes. <sighs> they had someone ride a dry, uh, walking around our camp every night that was a boa constrictor catcher. So Damn. his job was to catch the boa constrictor so they don't go into our tents. So we're sleeping in tents. Jesus Christ. So yeah. Somebody you... got bit by one? 
Oh yeah, like most people got bit. Yeah, you have to put your hands in some things, and then snakes will bite you. Uh, so you have to sign liabilities and waiver forms and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, but you got to do that on Housewives. You know what I mean? Like, like on most reality shows, you have to like sign off. It's like, a different type of snake on Housewives. Yeah, like, I mean, different, different type of snake. Yeah, different, <laughs> yeah you yeah. might. But you can get tore up. I, I wanted to ask you about Deal or No Deal back in the day. When you, what was the semblance of you uh, holding case number nine the first week, but then being number one the rest of the? I don't know. They just like changed me, and I kind of liked it because I was. I feel like I was there since day one. So it kind of like mm-hmm. was sentimental, but we met a lot of people through that. That's when Trump came through that show. Okay. And because of that, he put me on Celebrity Apprentice. I don't rock with him anymore, but you know that show was it was a big deal. Like you got to see people's lives be changed yeah. from, you know, mm-hmm. winning crazy amounts of money. All right, we got more with Claudia Jordan when we come back. Don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody is DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Claudia Jordan. Charlemagne? What was more difficult, this show or the, the Tubi movie where you shot the whole family? <laughs> like, which one? Yo. Um, yeah, you killed the That is hilarious, show to me. Yeah. I, I, Can I just explain that? Please, I watched dude. it like the once movie. every couple of weeks. I That's great. hilarious. The, I, I, I love it. I, like, I thought it was fantastic. Listen, I don't take, you, y'all know, I don't take myself seriously. So <laughs> the rest of the movie was decent. It's just that, it's like, you know when they feel like, it feels like they run out of money at the very end with the editing? Yeah. Because, like, the rest of the movie has a good nah. story. Yeah. Like, when I saw it, I was like, come on, dog. Like, the gun didn't even move. The I kid, loved right. it. The kid, I watch it often. <laughs> I watch it over too many. But he be sitting there talking about, she ain't had no gun. It was a gun. It just didn't move. Like, <laughs> and it didn't make no noise. Yeah. It didn't do nothing. And the kid, the way the kid died, the kid just went, that's it. I'm a kid. I'm a kid. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jesus I had to Christ. stop the kid. That was me improving. I, I wanted to add the extra stank of stomping on people after I shot them. I yes. Thought, was that too much? Was that overkill? Yes. No, I mean, for the character she was playing, though, the role she was playing. Stomp the little no. girl, though. Well, it was a boy. A little boy. Yeah. First of all, I'm in, my man's in jail. I wait for him. Then when he gets out, he's screwing the parole officer. And, <laughs> and, she, and then when I go to jail for shooting her in the leg, he don't wait for me and then starts a family. Right. When you hear that, ain't I ju- aren't I justified now? What? Not the kid. Not the kid. Kid, nah, but <laughs> I said I wanted to have a kid. Yeah, it's just like an episode of Snapped. That's it's like yeah, you come yeah, home to a life right. that you wanted or whatever, and your man ain't even wait for you, and you come home to a Especially another when kid. you wait for them. Yeah. And now you can't re- return the favor. Everyone yeah. got to go. Killing everybody, even the kid. And the kid was. I think I need to watch the rest of the movie, because I do want to know what happens <laughs> after that. just go do to that really? part. Because everyone, everyone, Snoop reposted it, Michael Blackson reposted just that scene, so you just see that, you're like, oh, what's Claudia doing this bull****? No, I didn't he, think it was he literally fast forwards to that part. <laughs> it was great. Watch the lead up. Like you got to watch how I held him oh down God. and all the things I had to deal with. And mm-hmm. with the parole officer, she was so stank. And then at the end, she gets my life. Mm-hmm. Everyone got to go. Oh, so that's the end of the movie that they be posting. Yeah, that's the very end, Charlemagne. That's oh. the end. Oh. Come on, she killing kids. I don't kids. stop no. killing kids. You know, yeah. I know I had you for a long time. <laughs> what? Charlamagne had to tell you, he was like, no, that's Claudia. I'm like, that's not Claudia. And he had, I did yeah, not know who she was first. Was she, was at like, first, no, I was like, I'm not. glad people don't know. But now I proudly claim all I want is you, part one and part two. Please go watch it on two. We run them numbers up. And I told y'all she about to shoot all I want is you three. <laughs> is it for real? Part three? They're doing a part three for real? You want to put the money up for it? it? I mean, you probably got it. I got $75. <laughs> <laughs> I got paid more for that than I did when I for some other stuff. I will say that. Right, really? right. Yeah, they they actually broke bread. People be playing. Yeah, people people, people be... sleep on Tubi. Some people are getting like six figures to do those movies. Mm-hmm. I want to do a Tubi movie. We want to do a Tubi movie. Just, it can oh. be arranged. Yes, I'm not even joking. Yeah. We want to do a Tubi movie. Can I shoot you the movie? Yeah, I got a whole screen. Please shoot him. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but it's going to be bad on purpose, though. No, but that's what yes. makes, listen, that's what makes those Tubi movies good. Like when you see like the mistakes in the editing, like I have mm-hmm. jeans on, then I have black pants on, and then I have <laughs> jeans on again. That's what makes I the movies that. great. That's yes. funny. I don't even want prop guns. I want to use my fingers. <laughs> What's wrong nah, with you? Man? I <laughs> see one like that on Tubi. They were like, they no. like strangling a guy, and he was this far away, and he was like doing this. Yep, all <laughs> types of stuff. But that's what make you go and watch it. Jesus. That's what make you go and watch Tubi. I have an idea I want to do. I want to, and I'm going to say this. No, maybe I should Don't say no idea. No, because somebody's going to steal it. I'm going to do it, though. But I need I need the Tubi movies to get the recognition that they should get mm-hmm. for best worst acting. Best worst kill scene. <laughs> yeah. Best worst like sex Like a Tubi Awards. Yeah. That's exactly. It. They used to yeah. have something like that. What was it called? The Razzies. I think it, yeah, the Razzies. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. But on top of that show, I also got College Hill. I just wrapped College Hill. Season three. Hey. Just did, uh, Season yeah. Three. Who I else just was got, on there? Carlos uh, Miller. Damn, Tamar Braxton. Who else was on there? Tamar <laughs> Braxton, Carlos Miller, Saucy Santana, Black China, mm-hmm. and Nick Young. It was nice. only six of us this time, mm-hmm. and it was very, it was interesting. It was a lot. It's very, very hard. Why'd mm-hmm. you go back? Cause you you graduated from. College. I actually had one year left. That's okay. what started my modeling oh, career. Wow. I had one year left. I transferred to Long Island University. I was behind on money. 
So I said, let me just be a model for like a year or two and go back. And I never went back. It just mm -hmm. started a 30-year career. Mm. So it, I did complete it. So it was hard. It's real school. Any celebrities that want to go on there, don't go if you can't read. And don't mm. go if you don't want, really want to do the work because you will get exposed. What do you think about um, Real Housewives, though? You never thought about going back? Like, what if they were to, you know, um, what you think? Well, I would do it now. But I, you know, I would do it now. I get asked that a lot. And then the people that don't like me, like, ain't nobody asking you if you want to go back on. But I <laughs> get asked, like, you just right. asked me that. Yeah. Please click Literally, that. Someone interviews. asked me yeah. that. I, I asked, asked her. I Someone wanted, asked me. I wanted to know if I, she I'm would be open to, to go, doing it. But, you know, it's like I'm begging to get on on Thursday. Right. I'm going to go do Watch What Happens Live later on tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a different place now. I have, like... That show, like, you have to have more of a glamorous life. At the time, I was, like, on a radio show, like, early on. Mm -hmm. uh, the pay wasn't crazy where I was, like, a baller. I was mm -hmm. doing all right, you know what I mean? Um, I have the things now, and yeah. I have a reason. I'm going to Atlanta. I'm working with this uh, the streaming network. I'm helping help them build up some shows out there mm -hmm. as well. So I have a reason to go out there. I would I would like them to do a, a Dallas reboot with black women. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a Real Housewives of Dallas, and it, it you know, it didn't have anybody of, of color there, which if anyone who's been to Dallas, there's a lot of wealthy black women. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. All my friends, like, I'm, like, the least successful of my friends. Like, they are mm -hmm. all balling. They all have businesses. They have businesses. Yo, I read something the other day, and it said, uh... I want to say it says the most millionaires in America are in Dallas. Yes. Dallas, yeah, mm. like almost, almost a million millionaires. There's I'm, a lot. Uh, I don't know. If it, it was a crazy it's number. A crazy number. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, there's a lot of money in Dallas, and the black woman there got it going on. Like they really, really do. Like they have house husbands out mm. there, you know, that wow. support them in other ways. Yeah. So you see a lot of that, and they have real money. Yep. See, yeah. murders out here, y'all. I'm out here, Miss Claudia Jordan. Appreciate you for joining us. Always yes. a pleasure, y'all. I'm very happy for y'all. So thanks, thanks for having girl. me. All, All right, right. Cool. it's the Breakfast Club. Claudia Jordan, you're checking out the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're asking 800 585 1051. We want all our ladies to call, and mm. we're asking, what's the biggest lie you told a man? Let me tell you something, man. Being a a, 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 a brother and a, and a niece, you know, to hear these women and the lies that they be telling. Taylor came in here just now, just told another lie for no reason. She said, what you should have told him is you're the only man I'm talking to. That's a good one, too, though. You see what I'm saying? One, Why you yeah. blowing Taylor up? You know Taylor just used that lie? And you what you mean, lie, being a brother and a niece? What? Huh? You said being a brother and a niece. Oh, I meant to say being a brother and an uncle. <laughs> brother and a niece. What you got to tell us? <laughs> what's going on? Being a brother and a niece. Lord Jesus. All Taylor, right. Taylor, tell him the lie you told about the orgasms. Don't act like you wasn't in there. Y'all yeah, thought I wasn't lied. listening. I ain't never I mean, did this, though. You just be like, oh my God, you made me three times. Why would you lie like that? Yeah, Stop I ain't it. never tell a lie like that. My wife lied to me like that, too. And that yeah. day, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Early on in our relationship. You ever heard this story, yeah. Jess? No, I never oh, did. Go ahead, NBC. You like to repeat this, huh? Go ahead, huh? Tell him this story again, huh? <laughs> 25 years, she ain't was no damn 25 years. Oh, my years. God. Wasn't 25 years. <laughs> in the beginning of our relationship, I could not make my wife orgasm through penetration just through the mouth oh my god and she would lie and say she was having an orgasm how long it wasn't that long you said it was a decade and I, she it was close to it was it was a long time but, it, but she, i was her first so okay. we were okay. each other's first so we didn't know what we were doing we exploring yeah. each other's bodies so i didn't know and one day in an argument she told me what is the point of women lying about that though because how can i get better and give you what you need if you don't tell me well you know around? a lot of times the woman just likes to make the guy um, you know, please feel good, and mm -hmm. we like to please the guy. Honestly, we be so scared to hurt y'all feelings because y'all like bitches. So a lot of times, you know, <laughs> no, it's we, true. It's, it's we really do not like a man's feelings is hurt way more. I mean, way quicker than a woman's. Yeah, you know, it's just that we we show it more. But y'all, that that could hurt y'all. Like, you know, and I know that her Envy Wayne's wife said it in an argument. It did. It's like, damn, yo, so you've been faking it all this time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It did. But it, so, yeah. it, it made the relationship strong because now, now you can figure out what exactly what, what, what she likes, what she doesn't right. like, and, and whatever. Because, I, you know, like I said, yeah. I learned sex from watching porn. You just go and bang, right. bang, 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 and you realize. And that's what you think is Correct. how it is. So, yeah. Especially depending on what kind of porn he was watching. Yeah. What kind of porn was you watching? But her feelings. Let's go to the fold live. Her What's wrong with feelings. You? She, did, she didn't want to hurt his feelings. Yeah. And that's mostly what it is. But I've never lied about that because I need mine. <laughs> that's what <laughs> I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Hello, who's this? This is Sharita. Good morning. Sharita, what's the biggest hey, lie girl. you told, Sharita? Good morning, liar. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. Of course I lied. Oh, my Absolutely. God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I lied to my parents. I met a guy on the chat line with my cousins and my friends. And then I lied to my parents and told them I met him at, like, an honors program. 
Mm. And that I really liked him and he was a nice guy. I was 15. I told him I was 17. And I told my parents, my cousins, my aunts, all my friends, everybody, like, we got to stick with the story because I love him. Now, how old was this man? He was 43. 18, turning 19. You know you could have got that man locked up? Mm. That's a charge. 19 well, that's why I told my parents. Told that's why I told my parents. But did he know you was 15? I mean, he found out when my little niece that was six told on me. Now, come on now. Jesus. You, you could have got this man locked that's, up. Yeah, that's, that's you could have got this man locked up being 19. Being All right. Well, like I said, I understand that. But I covered my faces. I went to my parents. I explained the situation. And your parents, parents like, like and Jane been... is Schneever. She said she told her aunts. Everybody, look, I, you know, that's I told everybody. I had a whole family meeting. Like, I love him. And I got to tell him myself. And my parents was like, all right, we trust you. And they met him, and they met his parents. And eventually he found out. And, you know, I mean, he was a little mad, but it was kind of after the fact, so... Because he was already in love with your little ass. This is not normal. No, that's not normal. That's All of y'all should be arrested. Not the fact that Listen, parents... Her and her family. And what happened with the guy? Where's he at now? Oh, she got the line. He's probably in up. jail. Cassie, what you Hey. Say? How you pronounce your name? Cassie. Hey, Cassie. Hey, girl. Now, what's the biggest lie you told somebody? Hey. Told somebody okay, the biggest lie was on first came, y'all. Good morning again. Hey, girl. Hey, y'all. What's up? <laughs> All right. My biggest lie, back in the day, I don't know if y'all remember, like, the loop. The Raven, it was like a phone call type thing. You could call it. It was like a dating thing, but it was like over the phone. Mm -hmm. So I probably was like 15 years old. I'm lying, and I told this boy that I was in Sierra music video. I was one of her backup dancers to Promise. Mind you, I, I'm 15. I'm a short, little, fat, little church girl. I'm telling him I'm a little backup dancer. Sierra video, and I know how to do the microphone pole trick. I could dance on a pole. Mm. And he went with it. He's telling all his friends about it. He went with it. So you told him you was a little big so, backup dancer. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> you was a big backup, dancer. big back backup dancer. Was, oh my god! He was in love with me. He was in love. I was a big back. I was a big back, big back backup dancer, and he went with it. And he was. And we were talking for like a good two years. I'm telling him I'm on the road. I'm doing different video shoots. Jeez. I'm like, you got to zoom in. I'm on the left. I'm on the zoom left. <laughs> Boy, women, are so, how, how old was the man? Uh, he probably was about 19, 20 at the time. We're still friends to this day, but he don't, you know. Why? Do y'all wait, 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 wait. But, but he don't what? He, he still what? don't know. <laughs> he don't know this part. He don't know this part. <laughs> he knew you were 15? <laughs> No, he didn't know none of that at the wow. time. I was well, lying. Y'all gonna, gonna get these men locked up, I, man. I, I, all right, all right. What size? What, 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 what size you is now? Oh boy. Oh, why do you want to know all of that? I'm working on it. Is the back is the back big or not? The back slim down. The back slim okay, down. So okay, so it's a medium. She's unbigging. She's she unbigging her back. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know when you young, you just go to that opposite, but I'm grown now. Okay, that's what's up, girl. Thank you, mama. <laughs> Hello, who's this? I don't want to say. Oh, boy. All right, what happened? What's the biggest lie? So, I lied to the last time I had sex. Say it again? I lied about the last time I had sex. You lied, you lied about, about the last, last time, time she had, had sex. sex. Okay. What did you yeah. tell him and what was the last time? So, I was pursuing this new guy, but I was still messing with my ex. And so, when it came time to, like, move to the next step, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I've been saving myself. I haven't had sex in, like, a year. But in reality, I was still messing with my ex. So, you know, I felt bad, but yeah, that's what I lied about. That's the question. biggest lie? That's the biggest lie? Yeah, I'm, I ain't well, a bad actually, girl. Say, actually, you're a great person. <laughs> you make, <laughs> she puts me to shame. So, so question, let me ask you a question. You, you hung oh, up on, hung on, on Stop sorry. hanging up on people so fast. <laughs> you're too slow. What Hello? you was raised? Hey. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Monique from Jersey. Hey, Monique, hey, Monique from Jersey. What's, what's the biggest lie you done told? Um, it's pretty simple, but when I was younger, he said I was pregnant so I could get abortion money. First of all, I don't like how you just say that like that's just a nonchalant lie like every woman says once in a while. Okay. Why? 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 She was pregnant. She was pregnant. Just to get some money. abortion money. Why? Yes, that is the lie. Who are you talking about? I, yeah, the other with the other way around is worse. When you're really pregnant, you tell a nigga you got an abortion. That's horrible because that's a new life. But when you're not pregnant, I'm pregnant. Just throw me five hundred. Thank you. Up, oh, we lost that. Like you know what I'm saying? That was a lie exactly. growing up in the urban community. Why not just ask <laughs> me for the money? You you already giving me poom poom. You giving me nah no, nah. Cause no, think about it. If you say if you say a, an abortion, most dudes gonna be like they are gonna come up with that money regardless. Mm -hmm. If you just ask somebody for $500 to get your nails and hand them, they'd be like, nah, B. Nah, abortion is motivation money for a nigga. 
No, 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 no. How many times did you do it, Monique? I just did it once, and it's because he was cheating. So I knew he was gonna break up anyway. So I just tried to get some money as a part of this. Jesus, hold on. You said you knew he was doing what? She knew he, he was, was cheating. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Well, look, I was with you before at one time, I, but you're different now, right? Oh, definitely. I'm way older now. Girl, Girl yeah, it's the more power to you because I was right on that same road with you. When the hell abortion started costing $500? <laughs> They've been $500 for the last, what, five, six years? They, yeah. Damn. Definitely. It's di- and then each one is different. You, get, you, you know, you got the pill one, you got the vacuum, and then it's like another, t- it's three different types of them. Really? Absolutely. Not that I've had them all, but I know because I dropped <laughs> off a couple bitches at the clinic before. Uh, my friends, my friends. You're my friends, my friends. What's the moral of the story? Women be lying. Don't lie. <laughs> don't, don't lie. You know, I don't know. I can't even say don't lie because everybody lie when they're young. Just grow up and then look back and be like, sorry. That's it. All right. That's it. This is Woo. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, the brother Chico B. Yes, oh, you indeed. know my name. I know your name, Chico. That's Stop good. it, man. Yeah, because the get downstairs called me Cisco Bean. I thought that was you. <laughs> oh, no, man. Yeah, I swear to God, we, like, we got Cisco Bean down here. <laughs> no. Who the f is Cisco Bean? <laughs> Y'all was in time for the uh, We Didn't Want Comedy Tour. How that's going, man? Oh, uh, it's going smooth, man. It's, yeah. it's dope. You know, we uh, just did the Barclays. We did Memphis and mm-hmm. Biloxi. So it's been dope, man. It's been dope, especially in this time when all of the comedians it's are, beefing it's beefing yeah. it shows camaraderie mm-hmm. that it's still love and you know yeah. it's dope man so who's on the show good time. For, for people uh, that don't know myself mm-hmm. Los Fly mm-hmm. Lil Duval mm-hmm. D-Ray Mike Epps Mojo Brooks oh, and wow. Moneybag Mafia do dates as well oh that's Damn. a nice balance you yeah. got the OGs you got the uh, the, 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 the now yeah. you know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah they give you all a lot of game yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, you we have relationships with these people already, being as though we work with them. But when you go on a tour, it's a different level of access that you get. You get to see how people move in a different capacity. So we learn a lot from, you know, like D-Ray and Mike and Duval and all that. And then they also are learning certain aspects from us from the way that we move. Because, you know, all three of us come from doing this together all right. the time. So mm-hmm. it's just certain levels of camaraderie they see amongst us that they get to learn, too. So it's a dope, dope experience. I want to know what's next for 85 South. Man, stop talking to me like you don't know me, Jess. <laughs> I don't know what's I don't know next, next for 85. 85. Get a job like and act like... Let me that? tell you about Jess, man. She's professional. Let me tell you about... I don't want to hear that. Let me tell you about Jess. The day I buried my mama, right? I'm walking down the street. I'm walking down the street. Somebody's like, Chico Bean. I'm like, hey, how you doing? She looked like... You don't know who I am. And I looked and said it was her. I'm like, oh, my bad. It was a long day. Fast forward. Her and her friend get out the club drunk. They upstairs in my room eating my mama repass food. Oh, you said you didn't want it, yo. They, they was up there eating my mama repay. I don't even know she knew who died. She was like, I'm so sad about your sister. Can I get some more of that rice? Get some more of that rice, please. You want to talk about, I want to know what's next for 85 cents. You got plenty more to talk about. You've been oh letting people God. you and all that. What? Like, what's what? going on? And because I'm pregnant. I know. I, that's how okay. it happens. And ain't no people. There's one... It, listen, it's that's my job. Just, Don't that, play that's just you know. That's who I want to get. <laughs> yeah, Come on, just you know. You know, no man, people. we too free. You got Nothing your nails bad. done. It look like yeah, COVID period. tests on your fingers. Period. I love always, it. Always, always. Yeah, how you like your job? I'm loving my f***ing job, Let's see. There you go. That's what I need. I need that type of energy. Don't talk to me like no white woman. What the hell wrong with you? Yes, you can. Certain things we got to keep away from. Because she go too far. I'm talking about they be talking over me, scared, sweating. I ain't never see Charlamagne sweat. I can't let her make the same mistakes I made, Chico. Yes, you can. You don't mind nobody else making them. Then you start being a good person. <laughs> you and your bunk bed, brother, up here. That's why they scared. They think you're going to f*** their relationship up. They oh scared you. God. They let you get comfortable. You're going to f*** around the house that they go together up here. And that's going to be the she problem. She gave she us the name. That. She did that last year. She gave us the name. Uh, what name she gave you? The Gusbins. The Gusbins? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you, you did the man. you did the boat bed brothers, yeah. Yes, you know yes, what yes, I mean. Yes, yes. Now y'all, you know what I'm saying, designer women, David Allen Greer and <laughs> Gaming Wayans. That's who y'all is. You know what I'm saying. We up here. Look, but That's let me so let good. me ask for both of y'all comedians because I, I didn't I did speak to Jess about this. With time so sensitive, right? Like they were about to cancel Charlemagne for saying Big Back. I've been you, canceled forever. <laughs> I'm canceled. Yeah, I've been, been canceled. canceled. Do you, do I'm you a have, zombie. Do you have to be extra careful when both of y'all doing comedy now? When y'all doing stand up? Because everybody got a phone now. That's why. That's why Dave. Everybody got take their phone and Chris everybody gotta take their phone do y'all are extra sensitive when it comes to people because you know if you say the wrong thing or you offend the wrong person today you cancel them all well like I say it's, it, it's maliciousness in my mind if I'm not being malicious then it's, I can care less how somebody feels about something that I say now if I'm being malicious then of course I think that energy is gonna cause you to have to have some backlash because you just being mean mm-hmm. but if you're back big and I say you're back big 
you got a big back. That's well, what's just mean the truth. now, though? What's I mean, mean now? Because before you could say, you know, you, it's it's jokes. But now people take jokes as it's messing up my mental. Uh, I can't take it no more. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about, it. but it's jokes. I mean, we've been all joked. You've joked on me. We, we joked on you. We joked on Charlemagne. I mean, like, but everybody's not prepared to be able to have whatever their flaws are put out in front of the world. Mm-hmm. So you got to understand, like when people hear certain things about themselves, they already have insecurities about whatever said thing is. And if you have the ability to point it out in a way where people are laughing at it externally mm-hmm. that internal pain that they have is just going to come out and now we live in a time where everybody has the access to be able to express themselves in a That's way right. that didn't exist 20 years ago yeah. so now if somebody was offended at a you know Dave Chappelle show in 1997 you had to write a letter you had to go mm-hmm. get up out your bed and go stand in front of somewhere and protest now you got to do is have Wi-Fi so Dang. it's just easier for people to be offended now I think that's the thing if you had to still be offended the old way a lot of people wouldn't be as offended as they are about simple shit. have you said anything you regret Chico I saw Jess was on the pivot she said she regretted the Chadwick Boseman comments Did I you? know what I said yo I'm, I'm just telling <sighs> for the audience that's listening yeah, <laughs> see, you see that's why that's why you gotta talk to these I the way know, you gotta talk yeah, to them right, cause they yo. be slick yeah cause Jess said that she do yeah cause Jess, yeah, like, Jess be doing that, it you gotta, they, be, they be slick they be trying to get away yeah. with shit man you gotta check them every time but <laughs> no you know what I mean I re- you know what I'm lying I regret some of the things I said about your skin that was wrong man, because, up, like, you re- I mean I regret some of those things man you know what I mean cause I, I don't want him to get stressed out and wake back up with the you know the hamburger circles around his eyes again <laughs> you know what I mean yeah I don't want him to have to go through that and I know that was a rough period where you having to sit under that machine and get cooked every day and I just was just <laughs> coming in here making fun of you and all of that and DJ See, MB, I, re- home, I regret some of the things I've said about you too man you, you a good person and most people don't know that so I just want to apologize most to both for y'all know that you know what I mean person. and out in y'all re- relationship like that like don't nobody know y'all sleep naked together in, the, in between yeah. breaks so I mean, <laughs> those things are things that I regret. So, yes, I apologize mm. to both of y'all. Thank you. Mm. Thanks, Chico. Your, your, your apology is accepted. No, no problem. <laughs> how, how has <laughs> changed since y'all went number one on Netflix? Uh, it hasn't. Really? No, nah, not not in the way that you would think that going number one on the billboard would. You know mm. what I'm saying? Did you it, have an expectation once you saw that? Like, no, no. Mm. I don't think we had an expectation because we are independent. So, mm. it's just certain things that come with, you know, being independent. So, it's... You know, it gave us a level of visibility that we didn't have. Like, I went to Ghana, you know, I was in Ghana, yeah, and I'm yeah, sure, yeah. like, the recon- recognition that I got when I was over there, a lot of that came from that being available. Mm-hmm. But as far as us being in a position where, like, now we number one and, you know, we got to, you know, start doing things differently, or now we get to work less because mm-hmm. it's made things easier for mm-hmm. us. Nah, that hasn't happened. We're appreciative of it, but we still got the same drive that we had before it happened. Mm-hmm. So, no Hollywood came knocking anything like that? Mm-hmm. No, nah, I don't even know what you mean. The way you asked that question, I know it's a follow-up question no, coming out there's too much going on i know you man. Yeah. Knocking, man. I, hollywood ain't come knocking you already know you ain't get invited to that one o'clock party you know? <laughs> see, see, they, i told you i told you i told you i knew it was coming man i know this in three movies what happened in three movies or oh, yeah i knew it was coming I, you now you won't trick me up here man i'm too prepared for y'all man and by the way we was making jokes about diddy Way before all of this happened, partying mm-hmm. jokes about Diddy. With, since mm-hmm. he did the interview on Drink Champs with oh, Nora, that, yeah, and he was like, "We ain't party, we, party, we, party, we party, party." Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, we've yeah, been I, making those jokes, and I think yeah. that y'all two are great people to speak on that because y'all done been famous way longer than me and Jess yeah. has. You know, what I mean, DJ Envy, you didn't been at the party for a long time. I so. never, I never party, party though. What does that mean? I don't know, but I, but, but, but you die, you gotta know but, what but it Diddy means. Said, you, I, said, you didn't party, party with him. I didn't, I didn't party. But what's the second part? I don't know. <laughs> that's the part. That's the, but don't skip that. I, I don't skip that. that. Like, Only don't first skip part. that. Like, this, this, we, yes, why you be letting these get away with this? How much are they paying you, man? I know, they paying me a lot, yo. But not, 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 All right, we got more with comedian Chico B. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking in with comedian Chico B. Charlemagne. Are you going to do a solo special? Yeah, I mean, eventually. You yeah. know what I mean? That's like I said, I've, I've never been one to rush that type of, you know, uh, thing because, you, you know, your art is your art. And... Mm-hmm. You know, I always move at my own pace, you know what I'm saying? And I think that now, with the ability that people have to just put things out, you know, I think that we've 
lost a lot of substance in that regard you know what i'm saying and mm. and i feel like whenever you put something out these bodies of work will live forever so i want to have one of them ones where when you look at it now and whether you look at it now or you look at it in 10 years it still resonates you know the the mike epps underrated never faded you know what i mean the Corey holcomb mm. the you know what i mean you the problems the you know, Earthquake About Damn Times, Dave Chappelle's Killing Them Softly, you know what I mean? These are specials that are timeless to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I watch those, those are the things that I base it on and I never really had the, the you know, the, the desire to just say, I, I'm gonna do it just so I can say I got that notch under my belt because like I said, we live in a different time now. It's not even as necessary as it was back in the day. You think 20 years ago, everybody wanted to be on HBO, now it's Netflix. So mm. it's just a matter of you finding the pocket that you need to be in before you put something out to the world because I feel like you can damage yourself yourself a whole lot more with the level of criticism that can come with not even I don't even want to say criticism because I don't want to make it seem like it's a negative thing but just the level of access that people have to be able to look at something and move right on to the next thing mm. it's very difficult to get somebody to sit with a piece of work and just really understand and sit with it so my mentality is always make sure that by the time I get it it's a body of work that is going to live forever so you know so. but also what makes y'all different to me is y'all y'all do like raw on a spot comedy that's mm -hmm. different you don't get to see that neither and like i don't care there's no other stand-up special on netflix hbo that i've seen in a long ass time where it's like like y'all three niggas, like y'all just it, it could be like 40 if y'all go to a parade y'all don't even know what y'all gonna talk about not at all and it's on the spot comedy mm -hmm. is raw it's like that's what make honestly wilding out fun. Right. Watching y'all just pick people and then the chemistry y'all bounce off of each other. It's like, I don't know, that's 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 different. Yeah. It Especially is. in this time. Y'all don't care what y'all say. No, nah, and it's that's the the reason why is because we understand that <clears throat> It's never been done before in the way that we're doing it. You see now with the climate of comedy and the way that all of the OGs are beefing and going back and forth. Like, we need Batman out this now, the way these is going back and forth. But one of the things that I think is the case, and Lowe said this to me years, used to say this years ago all the time, because he's the, you know, our elder in the, as far as the group. He's the OG amongst us. He was like, man, these don't like each other. They hate each other. They can't stand each other. He's so why do you think saying, it's bubbling now, though? I mean, because, you know, once Cat came out and did that interview, it just shook the game up. It was just one of those things that shook the game up. You know what I mean? I, I think that, you know, truth is subjective. I say this all the time because mm -hmm. what's true to you is a lie to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But if somebody tells their truth, all of the people that he was, you know, speaking on, they received that and they had, you know, it's like this is backroom, you know, green room comedy talk mm -hmm. that was you know gave to the world so once mm -hmm. that happened now you got these backroom conversations that have been happening for years now you got them coming to the forefront so all of these conversations that these people probably have been having in green rooms since the early 90s mm -hmm. now it's like all right well, f you wolf mm -hmm. and you know now i think that's just what happened but i mean for as far as we go our generation we love each other like we yeah. really got genuine love but does for it each help other. or does it hurt does it, it does it push you to to be better or does it say F the comedy game because I can't work with this person. No, we don't have that element. You know, we don't have that element, of, at least not that I've experienced. You know, I'm sure there's probably some people who don't get along or don't like each other. But like I said, it's too easy to get in contact with somebody now. If I had a problem with somebody in 1995, it might be a little difficult for me to get a number on them or get in contact with them. Now, if you got a problem with somebody, it's very easy to get in contact with them. So I don't mm -hmm. think we even had that element. It, there's, the level of disconnect between artists has shrunk so much that our generation, we really, you know, we really f with each other. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, this is my uncle. Like, I love her to death. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Without Why do you say that, Cause, man? Because the way she treat me. She treat me like an uncle. Like, every time I see her, she cuts me out like an uncle. And all that. Like, it's genuine, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I love Jess. Like, we all do. Because we came up together. You know, we yeah. all was broke together trying to figure this thing out. And I don't think a lot of them had that same element. When they was all broke, they was all trying to get the same spot. We know now that there's more spots yeah. available than just one. You see that with the 85 South Show. It's three people who are now on a tour with the We Them Ones tour. All individually doing sets, all coming out by itself, all, you know, got our own face up on the screen like everybody was aspiring to do in the 90s. But right. now we are able to do that right. and then double right back and come on stage together and then double right back and go do a wild and out and then double right back and, you know, meet up with Jess and do something with her because as we realize now the opportunity is there to do whatever it is you want to sure. do. Yeah. You don't have to all fight for that one spot. But I think that's what causes the OGs that had a problem. They still fighting for a spot that really don't even exist no more. How'd you feel when Cat <laughs> Williams shouted you out? 
Uh, you know what's crazy, man? Uh, my daughter, man. Salute to my baby who has her had a promotion. YouTube, had a promotion, had a promotion right. who has her YouTube channel that she just started, man. So I got to plug that, man. My baby then started her YouTube channel. I'm so proud of her, man. So make sure you subscribe. Piss Chanel. But um, I was in Africa. I was in Ghana when the interview came out. This is how goofy my daughter is. Like, I'm in Africa. And, you know, my first thought when I seen it, I was like, man. Hope this n- don't say nothing about me. Because, you know what I mean, once I seen what he was saying, because, you know, over there, the, the internet mm-hmm. access is different, so I couldn't really watch it. So my daughter FaceTimes me. She like, Daddy, you seen the Cat Williams interview? I was like, I seen clips of it, baby. She was like, you know he said your name. Your hard drive. I said, what'd he say? She said, find out when you get back to America. And I'm the phone up That was a good tease. That was a good tease. And you Boy, over there I'm like, man, 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 that was a good tease. Man, listen, man. I'm like, yo, what did he say? But then my manager, man, she sent me the clip, and I seen it. You know, he it was a positive <laughs> thing. And I was thankful and grateful because, you know, I, the first time I met Kat was at a Wild and Out show in uh, Las Vegas. We had when we was on the one of the first Wild and Out tours. And prior to him coming to Wild and Out, to actually do the show, which was just last year. When we first got on, cause you know, we was the, you know, the reincarnation of the show mm-hmm. when it came back in 2013. And when I tell you from our first season, probably all the way up to like our fifth or sixth season, mm-hmm. they was talking about Cat like this was the boogeyman. Mm-hmm. Like every time, Cat might be coming. Kat, remember when Mad Dog was coming on Martin? Like <laughs> yeah. that's how they would talk about Cat. Like, all right, if you come in here, don't be afraid and don't be. So um, after a certain point, I was just like, man, whatever, you know, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So by the time we actually met, he came to the, this is right after he won the uh, Emmy. So this, you know, I'm hearing stories about him in the building because we doing an arena. So I'm hearing stories. Cat showed up with the Emmy and the Louis Vuitton bag. Cat was smoking two cigarettes at the same time. And it was just like, man, where is this? I got to find him and, mm-hmm. and say hello. So I, my creative process, I walk around and talk to myself and get my mm-hmm. jokes together. I don't really write shit down. So as I'm on one of my missions, it seemed like he was on the same one. And I ran into him and I was like, hey, man, Cat, how you doing, man? My name Chico, man. It's a pleasure to meet you. He said, don't disrespect me. Everybody knows you and walked away. I was Damn. like, oh, <laughs> I don't know if that was a good or positive interaction or not, but you know, that's what it was. And then we ended up having a conversation sitting outside of the hotel. He just happened to be walking his dog and I talked to him and it's brilliant. And he showed nothing but love. He was gracious in every aspect and letting us know that, you know, letting me know at that time how much of a fan he was and how much he appreciated what I had brought to the show and the elements of the show that, you know, he re- I reminded him of himself at that time Mm so just like I said I've been blessing the game that when I've met the OGs they've embraced Mm -hmm. me you know what I'm saying so being as though he did that interview I just look at it like he told his truth Mm -hmm. whatever you you know I mean Mm -hmm. you tell your truth people are going to receive it whatever way they receive it but he told his truth man so you know I mean I, I think that it was good for the game in that regard but it was bad for the game in regards to the way it set fire up under the OGs all right, well, don't move. We got more with Chico Bean. When we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yep, we are The Breakfast Club. DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We're still kicking it with comedian Chico Bean. Charlemagne. Is your daughter telling you what she wants to do yes. in her future? Yes, yeah. all the way. How old is she? Chico? She's 15. 15 so, now. Damn. Yeah, yeah she's getting up there, man. Mm. But she's very, very, very clear about the things she wants to get into. And, mm. you know, for me... It's an honor to be able to provide her with the level of opportunity that I never got because I didn't have my father. My father was gone. So there's a 50 percent of of a helpmate that I never got to receive. So my you know, it, it brings me joy to be able to help her skip a lot of the parts of the game that I knew that, you know, I had to go through just because I didn't know no better. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, like she's I'm her springboard, like you stand on my shoulders, baby, so you can see better because mm-hmm. that's what I'm doing this for. And the fact that she is. You know, wants to be in the entertainment and wants to be, you know, a, a actress and all of those things. Like it, it, it helps me to know that I'm doing the thing out here that can help her get past just on namesake. You know what I mean? When she show up, the fact that she is who she is is gonna mean something. That brings me the greatest joy because I know that if I would have had that, then I probably would have been able to get to the greatness a whole lot quicker than I did having to figure it out and create my own blueprint without help. You know what I'm saying? So she. She's really, really excited about her YouTube. You know, we had talked about it. And like I said, I don't lie to my daughter. We keep it, you know, we have conversations that are direct. I know people say you're not supposed to be friends with your child, but I think that's another old mentality. Yeah, you know what I mean? Gonna, I think that's yeah. a, a old narrative because if you're not, you got to think about the access that these kids have now 
and the things that they are up against. Like I wasn't when I was her age, I didn't have to compete with every other 15 year old's highlight reel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't have to compete with their highlight reel. I didn't have to go on on a device and be able to mm -hmm. see what all the n on the other side of the city was doing and, mm -hmm. and all the n that went to every school was doing. Mm -hmm. So they under a different level of pressure. Because at 15 years old, if Wanda, God rest her soul, would have had cameras in her house, she would have went to jail. Mm -hmm. She would have went to jail for the that I was doing in her house at 15 years mm -hmm. old. You know, I think that forward thinking, like, now it is what it is, but in ten years, what is it going to be? You know, I don't know if y'all seen that Apple Vision that came yeah, out. Y'all used it. Yeah, I got one of those. Don't disrespect me. You say what? Why you say that? I don't know. Because you're sitting there with a ThinkPad yeah. and not an Apple computer. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody know what Apple Vision. No, they, no, they, they don't. Yeah, don't they don't. yeah that's what that. I just realized that he got that old ass computer. Just that's what I said. good job. It's a lot of good luck on this computer. A lot of good data. This, I had this for 14 years. You had that computer well, for 14 it's, years. They ain't selling them now. Started, Boy, I know. She said they ain't selling them now. Now hell no, they ain't selling them now. Unless you go to a pawn shop. That's what it is. That yeah, for real. I know. Boy, you talking about secrets. Ain't no telling what's in that computer. Go in his history, see what he looked up. I'll show you some stuff. It's kind of crazy. Nah, I don't want to see stop, it, man. No, see, that's why I say stop. Look, he's like, stop, 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 stop. I never know, because you never know. Stop, stop, stop. Like it, it reminds me, damn, when I first moved to New York, what was, what was I on? And I can see it just by looking. I'll show crazy. you. I'll show you after the interview. No, don't show me after the interview. I don't want to see DJ Envy naked, nigga. That's nasty. So back to your Apple Vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, just. A lot of Michael Kors bags, I'll tell you that much. For Stop real? Stop it, Missy. You that's how, that's mm -hmm. it. Michael Kors. You get him in trouble at home. Yeah, you was buying Michael Kors bags. Look mm -hmm. at that. Wish <laughs> would. See what I'm saying? The whole like uptown. The whole yeah. uptown. Yeah. This <laughs> bought a Michael Kors bag like the, the night shift at the CVS. <laughs> right. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you was at the outlet for sure. Oh, <laughs> they don't even sell the bags in the real store. You had to go to the Tanger Outlets <laughs> 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 to get them Michael Kors bags. <laughs> that's crazy. But you were talking about the Apple Vision. Oh, yeah. Man, you didn't have it. You didn't have Apple Vision. You had Michael Kors Vision. That's what you had. But no, it's a. I say that to say it's a dope. Like, oh, you know, look into the future because mm -hmm. you put this on your face and it's your phone on your face. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything that you can do on your phone, you can do on this machine, and you can walk around with it on. The only thing is now, you know, it's so expensive that you just gonna look like an ass around with it on. You're but the, only one with but it. the reality is, this is the future. Like, this is the the beta version of this machine mm -hmm. so this is basically the nintendo of the future That's right mm -hmm. so you think about what the nintendo was versus what the ps5 is right so by the time you know our kids get to be our age this shit is gonna be irrelevant you know in my mind i'm like yeah that sound crazy now because they doing it but imagine if we had the internet in the 2000s you know what i mean ain't no telling jess if you had the internet in the 2000s what I'm asking. See, that's, <laughs> what? Yeah, see, that's what I mean. That let me know what type of time you was on. You was yep. in Baltimore eating crab cakes, and I already <laughs> know what time it would have been because I might have came to see you in 2007 if I'd have known, you know, what I know like, now. But you've been bluffing for years. So ain't nobody been bluffing. Nephew, so ain't nobody became, been bluffing. Became Stop. My nephew and that's it. Ain't nobody been bluffing. Anyway, how's your love life? Bl ain't nobody been bluffing. Don't how's do that. Jeff. <laughs> how's yours? How's your, I'm good. I'm pregnant and I'm happy now. So what's up? I mean, I don't understand why you coming at me like that. Like, what is it that you're basically? You? No, 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 no. He was scared. He was scared. What was I scared of? I don't know. What was I scared of? Well, Tell me I what know. I was scared of. Look, I don't. Well, it wasn't even that he was scared. He just wasn't with it. Look, when I first got the wild out, I was like, oh my gosh, I like this. He quiet. Like, he ain't all all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he ain't wild. Pick it up, pick it and kill it. Well, you know, yeah, that, that wasn't even out when I first got there. They, they, that was a yeah, later that was game. That was a later game. Yeah, sure. so I, you know, I tried to throw some game on him. But mm -hmm. he was like, oh, don't you have a boyfriend? I'm like, who, who the f be worried about that? You know what I mean? Me? Like, who? Yeah, I, right. I come but, from out the ghetto. Is a right. kid you about a just hilarious in my hood. You know I what I mean? It, but I don't play them games. My boyfriend, he wasn't that type. So that's the what thing. What type of nigga was he? That's why, yeah, yeah. So, so that, yeah, I did. That's why I was going that chick. I'm like, okay, now nah, you cool. You know he what I'm saying? He quiet, he low. Right, right, right. But he really like funny, like he down to earth. Just, I'm like, all right, cool. So I told him that I broke up with him. I told him that I broke up my boyfriend. Did you really do it? You lied. Then be. Okay, I'm sorry. Again, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I don't, did I lie? Yeah, I, I did. I, I let like a week go by, and I was like, "What's up now?" We broke up. I was acting sad and everything. I was like, "I'm like sad. Like, what's up now?" He was like, "You didn't break up with him. Like, no, you didn't." 
And I didn't, but I'm like, this is gay. Like, how you not? <laughs> Just because you, gotta be you don't gay? want that, I don't want none. That's crazy. That's, crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. I was like, I was like, all right, he just gonna be a brother at this point. Yeah, this because because you gotta understand, you know, my I gotta be very selective with any woman I deal with and because of the perspective that I have and how I live. I'm, you not about to come at me. Not saying that you would have did this, but I know you would have just because I know you who you are. You mm -hmm. just that type of person that you mm -hmm. gonna flash out. But you're not gonna be the only woman that I'm dealing with. Right, yeah. and that's and so that's I have to be very very careful with who I let into. The way that I operate, I want to know he how Just Kick game. He was what is just, how does Just Kick game? And Man, he, she offer you crab legs, Baltimore. Like, <laughs> you want to get some crab legs? You want to you get some crab legs and listen to some house music? No, That's what you want to do? You wanna do? I got this special butter I make. I make this special butter. I put a little bit of cream cheese in it so the butter no, lasts longer. No, you want to eat some crab it. legs? You want? What you I, say, Jess? And then he was cool. No, he was just, yo, and that's the thing. He be talking all smooth, you know, you know. And I'm like, that's cheat code. Yeah, man. I know. But yeah, he don't. He ain't tried. He don't ever try. I'm not, I can't. Like, he just. And then by the time I actually really did break up with Chris, th this was my ex boyfriend, the first Chris. By the time I did break up with him, you got I had Chris already time yeah, Chris. Chris. But this one Mexican with locks, and he got a job, and he took care of everything. So this is good. Okay. And so right by the time I got rid of Chris for real. I had already got to, to know him, right? Like, and we was cool. We, we was super like, cool, man, like, and got close. And I was just like, it damn. Ain't worth up. Last question, because he is a comedian, <laughs> and he's got away with words. Do you think there's anything wrong with referring to somebody as Big Back? Uh, in today's society, of course mm. it is. That's why you got in trouble. You heard that lady feelings. <laughs> I wasn't even talking to her though. I was I talking about Big Back behavior. I mean, I don't care. You heard that lady feelings. Mm. You said that lady. I apologize. Back was shaped like a pack of flushable wipes. That's messed up. <laughs> I did not say that. That's what you said. I, I heard you I say it. Say yes, that. you did. Don't try to lie on the radio now. That's what you said about that lady. Yeah. Chico. Yeah. Salute to the to the to the lovely voluptuous you, women of the world and That's make right. sure voluptuous is yeah, a man. better word. Yeah. I Told voluptuous you. women, voluptuous, the, the voluptuous like women voluptuous. of the world, yeah. and all the way, yeah. All the voluptuous women, make sure you get your tickets to the We Them Ones tour. <laughs> all right, it's the Breakfast Club. It's Chico B. You're checking out the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Damn, the hee haw again. <laughs> it's time for Donkey of the Day. <laughs> I am ain't trying to be donkey today no more. They should be embarrassed by what they already did. I didn't, I'm not making these people do these things. Called donkey of the day, and it really caught me off guard. Damn. History Month uh, goes to a 24-year-old man named Isaiah Bartu. Isaiah is from Nebraska, ladies and gentlemen. That, that, is this the illest in Nebraska? Mm -hmm. He might be. Just depends on your definition of ill. Okay, if by ill you mean mentally, yeah, that's probably true. See, Isaiah was looking for a sweet lick. Y'all know what a sweet lick is, right? Huh? All you toxic studs, calm down. I'm not talking about that kind of sweet lick. <laughs> All right? Okay? Oh I'm God. talking about the kind of sweet lick that the Urban Dictionary defines as easy money. Basically, if I wanted to rob you, take something from you, it would be easy to do. So I guess Isaiah, knowing he had a sweet lick, decided to use something sweet to get the lick off. All the toxic studs out there are like, Uncle Charlotte, what are you talking about? <laughs> Why do you keep talking about sweets and licks? You're making us hungry and horny. I'm an well, let's go to 1011 now. News for the report, please. A Lincoln man is in jail or in accused of holding up a quick shop and taking money from the register. Police say Isaiah Bartu walked into the store earlier this week and demanded money. An employee tells officers Bartu had a hostess cinnamon roll box over his hand, making them believe he was armed with a gun. Now they gave him money and he took off. Investigators say Bar 2 was later found nearby with a handgun, I don't get money, it. and meth. He's facing a number of charges, including for robbery and weapons violations. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Uh, this is what I don't understand. If you actually had a handgun that police caught you with later after the robbery, why would you rob Quick Shop with a box of Hostess cinnamon rolls? Mm. What is the reason? You had a pistol, but you decided to use pastries? This man has a gun tatted on his right forearm. Why? I don't know. Because clearly it's just for show. Because he chose Cinnabons over guns. Yeah, I like Cinnabons over guns too. Especially when I'm high off marijuana with the munchies or when I'm at Charleston International Airport, but not when robbing a Quick Shop, okay? We all play too much. All right, I don't understand why humans play with their own lives and the lives of others. You go in quick shop with a box of cinnamon rolls. 
Now the person behind the counter is fearing for their life because they think you got a gun. They might have a gun and they might be fast on the draw. Next thing you know, you dead over a Danish. How are you going to explain that in the afterlife? Okay, sitting in hell over hostess cinnamon, cinnamon rolls? Eternal hellfire for cinnamon swirls? The news report says the female clerk feared the container of hostess cinnamon rolls contained a handgun. That's why she gave up the money. But no, it was just individually wrapped frosted pastries. Young lady, you did the right thing. Drop on the clues box for that young lady. Okay. This isn't social media where you have time to figure out if something is real or not. Quick shop ain't dying for you. Give that man a couple of dollars for his latest meth habit and move on. Now, I don't know whether to blame this on the meth or the current society we live in. See, I understand drugs make you do something strange for a little bit of change. But we also just live in a strange society. It's a bizarre world where a man would absolutely leave his pistol at home but put his hostess in a gun holster to go rob the quick shop only to get caught and charged for his pistol later. Mm. Mm -mm. Some donkey of the days just sell themselves. Please give Isaiah Bartu the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. You are the donkey mm. of the day. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. We have Money Long. Welcome. Good morning. Hey, Grammy Award winning yes. Money yes. Long. Yes. Say that. Welcome. How you feeling? I'm really good. I'm super just grateful. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the first time I came, I was still trying to figure it out. It was early. Mm hmm. And uh, that money got longer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. I received that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's just amazing to just like watch how God weaves the fabric. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just you know I'm grateful. I'm very happy. So your song made for you. That's like one of the biggest biggest tracks right now. Did you think that you ever top hours and hours? No. No. Really? Mm -mm. No. I mean, you know, at that moment, that was the biggest thing that had ever happened to me. Yeah. And so, and it was just a moment. Culturally, I mean, I want to be careful how I talk about myself because, you know, I don't want to sound Delulu. <laughs> but at the time, it was just like, yo, this girl just came out of nowhere during the fourth quarter, which is like a no-no. It's like mm -hmm. Christmas music. Yeah. You just don't do that. I was independent, 34 at the time, mm -hmm. and black, a woman, R&B music. Given. It's all things that people are just like, no, 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 we don't want it. <laughs> and yeah. then the way that people just received the song, men, women, mm -hmm. children, the church, they were singing in the church house. Mm -hmm. It was just yep. like everywhere. And um, so, no, of course, you don't think that you're going to do that again. Mm -hmm. You know, same effect, even bigger. How was it the church version of Owls and Owls? I could praise you for hours. Mm -hmm. oh, Sit yeah, and yeah, talk yeah. with you for hours. Got you. Amazing. You know? What if God tell him I ain't got time? Y'all go uh -uh, uh -uh. What? What's wrong with you, man? Uh -uh. <laughs> I'll give you a couple minutes. You I got, out. That, I got a lot of children. Yeah, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a secret to all of these hits you you be writing up? God. There you go. There you I wouldn't go. even say it's not a secret. It's there just like go. I really, I was scrolling through my posts the other day and reading my captions. And I'm like, wow, like if you didn't know me, you would really be like, oh, this girl is tapped in. And I, and I am, but I, you know, I'm not, that's, I'm not trying to put that on. That's just really what's in me. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. How, how long did it take you to, to break into the game for most for artists out there that's that's trying to get in and it's taking a long time? How long did it take for you to get to where you was like, wow, I really have a shot? Uh, I mean, you know, to use your words, in my opinion, I'm still breaking. You, you know, got a I'm Grammy still... money long. I, 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 I... <laughs> I mean, lots of people have Grammys that you never heard of. Yeah. You know, facts. Yeah. So like for where I want to go, I, I still have a, a, a little bit of a piece of mountain to climb. But I've been doing this. I've been wanting to do this since I was... 14 or 15 years old mm -hmm. half my life and then i started professionally when i was about 19. i was uploading videos on youtube before yep. that was like normal when i was like 16 doing it for my bedroom and stuff like that once i got into the business in the game it took me until about 21 23 to really start seeing some money and then from there 23 to about 28 29 
I'm just in the studio cooking, like writing for all these people. And then it took me another three or four years to just be like, okay, I've been doing this for 10 years now. It ain't really, I feel like I'm at the ceiling. What's next for me? And so these last three years, I've been just focusing on myself. So all in all, you know, I'm not really too great with math, but I want to say about 15, 17 years, it took me to get to this place. Did you ever want to quit or the fact that you were writing for so many people? What you mean? (laughs) Really? I wanted to quit so many times and I would be in my closet screaming into a pillow crying like, why is this so Mm. painful? You this know, is why you were even writing for other people? Or? Yeah. Really? Because you were making money, you were getting your publicity. You, the misconception with that is it's a two year pipeline. So mm-hmm. imagine going to work and you don't get a check for two years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And your coworkers is nasty and they don't want to feed you. <laughs> yeah. And you got to figure out, you know, like the actual reality of it is not glamorous at all. You know, I, I don't know if you guys saw a uh, fellow songwriter, Tiffany Fresh, she was kind of talking about it online, just about writers, artists who take publishing. And like, there's all these things that happen to you as a writer that, you know, that's what is paying your dues. Mm-hmm. And so eventually, you know, you either fatigue out and you be like, I can't do this thing for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you just keep going and you keep taking it on the chin. Like, I got kicked so many times and I just kept getting back up like, a new day you know mm-hmm. people used to be like she a little crazy she she on something why does she keep coming back why is she so nice mm. um and it was really just because i would hear this little voice in the back of my mind like but if you quit tomorrow could be the day mm-hmm. and next week it could be i don't know i just felt this tugging just this little tiny tug in my stomach like girl and then keep if you going. quit then all of it would have been for nothing mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying mm-hmm. and you would be looking back on a different story today mm-hmm. you know it wouldn't be made for you and I was for hours I love the visual by the way you had my best friend Jolanda Lewis in there oh my the, 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 the pregnant yeah, the pregnant girl you had oh, in there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I love that video she had sent me the video she was very sweet she was she was very sweet but I love that you was outside the window I was like you was looking stalkerish and you was looking like a lid you was I said what's what's going on but I love I love the whole concept so did you do you did your own treatment for that or did you the original treatment was very creepy it was very much creepy <laughs> Um, and everybody was like, yeah, we love that you're so creative, but we can't do that. Um, cause I had just seen like uh, this headline about this chop shop in Arizona where they was taking bodies and they was cutting them up and like mm-hmm. putting the arm from one body in the head mm-hmm. from selling body parts and stuff. Um, you know, we don't know if we can talk about that on there, but that's really, that's yeah, real can. stuff that be mm-hmm. out here. People yeah, are crazy. Right. Mm-hmm. People and so, with no organs inside yeah, of yeah. So, so it was that. And I was like, Ooh, we could do like some Sweeney Todd, like. You know, for I, made for you. Yeah, like it, I wanted it to be like around Holly <laughs> Halloween, Got um, it. like really Tim Burton kind of style. Oh, that's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like body parts and all that. The original together. idea was like my my man. You know, he had a little accident. He gone. He not with us no more. And I'm mm. like, well, you know what? I'm about to go dig him up, and then I'm about to go take some other body parts, and I'm gonna make me a Frankenstein. And then we gonna dance together, and then at the end, he gonna squeeze me so hard he don't know his own strength, and he gonna kill me. You know, Ooh, and then, but it was like an Halloween. episode of American Horror Story. I like it a little bit. Call me, okay. yeah. Let's write a TV show. <laughs> Who on your team told you not to do that? Everybody. <laughs> they were like, uh, you're Great trying job. to get sponsors. You know, they don't really want to endorse this kind of thing. You can't be committing you. any crimes. And so, you know, grave digging is a crime. Yeah. Um. And so then I reached out to my homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> Got grave digging is a crime. I if you didn't know, you know, uh, I reached out to the homie Trinidad James. And I was like, I really want to work with you on something. You know, he was doing a lot of stuff with Sexy Red, your your best friend. Yeah. Uh, Sexy Red. <laughs> and uh, who else? Sukihana, mm-hmm. um, Callie, you know, a lot of the rap girls. And I was like, well, what's up? You trying to, you know, can you flip this treatment? And so him and his teammate, Des Gray, turned it into this STEM black women in tech you know, future of romance. Mm-hmm. Will we be dating robots in the future? Um, the the way that the dating pool is set up right now, maybe you might have to make you a man, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's the concept behind um, the video. And I think people were like a little creeped out. They're like, well, did she kill him? And like make him into a robot? I'm like, that's your interpretation. Up to you to figure out. I loved out. it. I loved what it ended up being. I loved Thank it. You. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we got more with Money Long. When we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilary, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Money Long. Charlemagne? I feel like it should, it should be so much easier for artists nowadays. We were just having a conversation before you walked in the room about how nowadays people only go off their feelings. They can mm-hmm. listen to every word that can come out of your mouth, but all they're thinking about is how those things make you feel. And music gives you a feeling. Mm-hmm. So as long as music 
feels good. It feels like they should already have an instant connection with you anyway. Like, oh, that's the person that wrote that song, so she makes me feel good. I can agree with yeah. that. To a, on a deeper level, I would say it's like frequency. Yep. Um, it's like when you put that intention into the song when you are recording, it resonates. Like, you know, when somebody tells you, oh, you look so beautiful, like that hits you. Yeah. And it makes you smile, makes you feel good. Or, and as soon as somebody be like, what you, what's, this, what's this outfit doing? I don't like that. It's ugly. Yeah. That hurts. Yeah. You know, or when somebody says, I love you versus, I mean, I can't stand you. Like, it hits you differently. Mm -hmm. And it, that same thing is happening when you're recording and you can actually see the wave file. It's the same thing, but it's just, you know, music and whatever you're saying. So you have to put that intention into it of like, what do I want this music to accomplish? How do I want it to leave people? How do I want it to resonate? Mm -hmm. um, after years of doing it, you start thinking about stuff like that. And I think with these, you know, the two songs you mentioned, Made For Me and Hours and Hours, mm -hmm. that is what people are feeling. Mm -hmm. They're feeling my intention of just love and harmony and kindness and connection. Yeah. And um, I'm glad to be able to offer that because there's a whole lot of other stuff out here that's not doing that. Yeah. I'm talking about everybody. My son sings that song. My oh, mom, me, everybody. Saying? 11. Oh, that's 11, so cute. right? And it was like, it was really big and trendy on TikTok. How did it affect you when Universal removed it from TikTok? Or did I, it even affect I you? I just want to be clear, you know, music is obviously the soundtrack to everybody's life. Um, a lot of people are becoming, you know, content creators themselves based off of the music that we have mm -hmm. created and offered them. And it does hurt to not be able to do that for yourself and you know, promote yourself using yourself and promote your own products, you know, promote yourself, yeah. promote your products, mm -hmm. promote your music. It definitely hurts. But I think that, you know, I just heard recently something that really changed my perspective on it is you don't ever want to be beholden to anyone. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever want, you know, to feel like without TikTok, I cannot right. move gotcha. forward, you know, um, but it's a wonderful platform. I've met a whole lot of great cool people on there had two three actually viral songs though like sometimes i be questioning like is this just my algorithm or is it really <laughs> everywhere like that because literally like it still shocks me i'm scrolling through instagram or i click on something on the explore page on instagram or i'm scrolling through tiktok and my song is playing yeah. or like i'll watch a video and i don't even have the volume on and i'll tap it and it'll be my music mm -hmm. that still is just like whoa you Do know? you have your moments where you get tired of listening to? Or no. You get, good, you said good, no. Good answer. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. but, now you did a yeah. you did a country album. Years ago, yes. Years ago. So you, you mm -hmm. were early in that. So you know what Beyonce's going, dealing with with trying to get songs played on the country stations, or was it easier for you? Is she really dealing with it though? At all. She wasn't. Not at all. No, she <laughs> wasn't. At one time, they, no, they, they because, stopped. And it. No. this is no shade. I love Beyonce. Love her down. But I will say, when you are in Nashville, attempting to showcase uh yourself as a country artist i mean there's this one guy tony evans jr if you don't see him you think that is an old white man like mm -hmm. i mean he is incredible but then when you look at him he's just like this really handsome buff football player looking dude that plays guitar black guy mm. it, it, it doesn't match what the traditional image is and one thing that you realize is as soon as you walk in the door their opinion of your music changes based on what they see mm. And so that's only something that you can experience physically and in person. Yeah. And I think Beyonce has transcended that to where she has so much notoriety and power and talent, clear talent, mm -hmm. that it's hard to hide behind the excuse that this isn't country. Bless your heart. The lady is Beyonce. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to play it or you're not. And yeah, if you're impact, not, yeah. there is a reason why you aren't. And it's very clear what that is. She debuted at number one <laughs> on the country charts. And she's number one in the country now. Overall. I think that's incredible because <laughs> yeah, there's never been a black woman to do that ever. Yeah. Yeah. But there the, have been many yeah. that have tried. Yeah. And that's my point. Mm -hmm. There have been artists. I started in 2018 with country. And when I tell you, I was fatigued very quickly by the, you know, you walk in the room and the forks clink mm -hmm. and everybody's like, who's this? brownie up here trying to you know and i used to make jokes like anytime i would go to a a new uh co-write is what they call it mm -hmm. or go to somebody's house i would bring a bottle of whiskey and if you know in tennessee that's the thing mm -hmm. tennessee whiskey and mm -hmm. i would make the joke just go ahead and get it out i'll be like yeah i didn't want to be the only brown thing in your house <laughs> so, <laughs> i didn't so want to be the only brown I thing didn't in, be the only brown something in here so i just brought you a little yeah. gift but it is a, is a well-known fact if you go down there they don't want you in there mm -hmm. 
and you know they can't hide that anymore so i think what she's doing is incredible y'all move out the way i saw you tweet recently i I don't know if you was joking but you you found out you were autistic okay so that's a little bit we for context Mm -hmm. i have dealt with like processing issues my entire life and you know as black and brown people we don't always have the best access or even ability to understand that some of our limitations cannot be helped like Mm -hmm. you need to go and talk to somebody and see somebody about that so just you know coming across literature and connecting with people who also deal with a lot of the same issues that i've been having and understanding what they have put or the name that they have put on it or attached to it, it made me start doing my own research and being like, well, wait a minute. When this happens to me, this also happens. And so there's a little bit of like ADHD, autism on this, like, and then I have lupus as well. So just understanding that that is like a stress induced inflammation of the body. And maybe I am stressed out because I'm frustrated because I can't process certain things or like, and I also think there's a other added layer of because I'm so intelligent to other people and I write these songs that they're and I look a certain way. They're like, ain't no way that you are. Because when you think about autism, you have a certain visual that you mm-hmm. think about. But there are highly functioning autistic people. And right. I want to be very careful about what, how I talk about it because it could be this is a sensitive topic mm-hmm. to a lot of people who may not relate to me or resonate with what I'm saying. I'm still figuring it out. Also, late diagnosis is a lot more difficult to find practitioners who can sit with you and and figure that out. You never been clinically diagnosed. Now I have to find someone who can do that for me mm-hmm. um and and test me cuz right now because I have lupus and I've been dealing with that since 2014, mm-hmm. anytime anything goes wrong with me, they just be like it's lupus. Mm. And just give me steroids, you know. Mm-hmm. So I have to really like find holistic doctors and get to the root of the issue because maybe it might not be autism, maybe mm-hmm. it might be something else. But in that moment, tweeted my frustration and mm-hmm. processing. You know, that's a great example of it. And I actually deleted Twitter off my phone after that because I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Let me just figure out what this is first right. before yeah. I you start talking like I know what I'm talking about. It's not about. good for your mental health. And I don't think people realize how much unhealed trauma is projected on Twitter and social media every yeah. day. Mm-hmm. Toxic opinions, undeveloped yeah. thoughts. Yeah. We still got money long in the building, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. We are The Breakfast Club. DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the God. And we're still kicking it with money long. Jess? How would you describe your love like now? Like, you know, after being married uh, before, early on, 26, you know, how would you describe it right now? I would say I'm more into real, like, deep love on a 360 global energetic. Like, I heard a quote. Um, what Was that on the way here? I was listening to Tony Robbins said, you can't love. Oh, Tony Gassens. Was it? If, when you really love yourself, you can't hate on nobody else. Yeah. Yep. Like, I, that's mm-hmm. where I'm at is, like, I can see the joy and beauty and love in everything yeah not just a romantic relationship you know i'm have a great relationship with my mother and father these days it's like you know i'm just i just just love like i just want to mm-hmm. push that i feel like we need it we need it so badly there's so much nasty stuff happening in the world right now people have zero compassion they just you know devoid of empathy and mm-hmm. you know they'll step on a dead body it's just like yeah. like i mean honestly it's just like why are you recording these men? Yeah, these men taking his last breath. Yep, you would record right. somebody dying. Is I remember you'd be scared of a dead body. You'd be scared to walk down the street and see one, or <laughs> or the thought of death makes you cringe. You know, now people are filming people. Walk right up to it. You know, mm-hmm. it's, and it's, so. it's it's actually Oof. scary. It's really yeah. scary. It's, it's just like, yeah, man, what is happening in the world? So. If I could offer some love and, you know, I call everybody baby. Hey, how you doing, baby? Yeah, like, me too. You look so beautiful, honey. You know, yeah. um, maybe that's just the Southern in me. I don't know. But I just want to give love. You know, that's what my love life is like. It's for the world. Mm-hmm. So you basically ain't telling me nothing about you being single <laughs> with somebody or nothing. I'm married. She married. Oh, you, oh yeah, okay. I've been married for nine years. 
also still to the same dude that you got when we were 26? Yeah. Oh, I know that's right, because I'm sitting here trying to look. We can go hours and hours about talking about this, but I had to realize <laughs> that yo, you still married to this man. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Because I also had another question, right? And I had to write it down because you know, I'll be stumbling over my words when stuff gets too long. But you have a line in your song where you mention smell of your perfume, right? Mm -hmm. Which has people thinking that the love interest is women. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. I ain't saying that's what I thought, but you know, that's what people think. So I have to ask you, <laughs> especially with how you spell the song I was and I was a lot of people thought it was hers, hers, hers and hers, hers. Yeah. yeah you know but this oh. not me this is somebody else <laughs> is that you leaving a little easter egg that you could be into women romantically but I know. prefer hot dogs I don't like bologna well thank you so much cause now I can go back and tell them that they tripping um uh, but you know I <laughs> said bologna <laughs> yeah I don't like bologna my bologna has a first name <laughs> what is the what first is name <laughs> Oscar? You have a bologna? <laughs> see, that's, you go back what he said. Uh-uh, baby. You see, he might be trying to tell us something. See? That's see? what I'm saying, man. You gotta watch that. talking about we gay and Illuminati. He like Oscar. Okay, buddy. Okay, Oscar. Okay. Okay. He's been a little off. A little off. Oh. 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 Okay, so that's when I can go back and tell everybody. But also, you know, El de Parfum, mm. that just means fragrance, scent. Okay. Right? And I think people, if you understand, like, uh, me and my friends, we all are scent freaks like we go to the per perfume shop the yeah. i mean it's a little spot mm -hmm. when you go in there it's like incense they got like the perfumed oil and you mm -hmm. just you know you take it out the wand and you put it and it lasts all day like mm -hmm. it'd be on your clothes three mm -hmm. days later so we love fragrance yeah. love yeah. and so if you shop perfume like we do it's you, everything's unisex yeah. these days but also if you are into the word of god you understand that the Holy Spirit has a perfume, a sweet perfume it talks about, you know? And I just think people like are really one track minded these days. Yeah. They want me to be a part of the Rainbow Brigade. Me so too. Yeah, they bad. Do. Like, mm -hmm. I love my girls. I love my girls. I love yeah. my people. But at the same time, it's like, baby, I don't, I know what you got. I don't want none of that. Yeah. I yeah. don't, I don't. I'm just making this music. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Let it be. I will say one thing I don't do is use genders in my songs. For the most part, I try to keep it gender neutral. Mm -hmm. Like you, I, it, us, we. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's more mass. Yeah. That's Digestible. What do you mean? You don't think that's, that's, when you're writing, it's not hard, harder? Mm -mm. She's a writer. She knows I do, that. I, I do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. do this, <laughs> Charla. Because you're talking about your husband and you say they. No, 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 you have to make it make sense. Got you, got you, got you, Because that no, suggests no. that yeah. I'm talking about non-binary folk. Got you. But I definitely so you would use say, Dave when you want to put like him or her. First person, you. It's always you. you. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Well, ah, okay. Um, you give me a superpower together, bro. Could be ours. Dope. Sit me on the counter, you know. Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? I got you. But no, y'all, I'm not at this point here lover. today. I am not. <laughs> she doesn't yeah, like balloons. A part of the LGBTQIA plus community. I love y'all down. Mm -hmm. Use my music for however you see fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no. I think that people just think because you're so creative and, and writers can be very strategic and leave little Easter eggs. You know what I mean? So like, you know, your fans could probably. Um, just a f like some of your fans could probably be looking a little bit too much. Oh no, this is one girl on like TikTok that. Yeah. breaking it down. <laughs> she talking about a woman. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> and I'm just I'm very entertained. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. since you got your degree, you know everything. What's the lot of <laughs> right? Us? You got your degree. You, you know, know it's just like people just be making up stuff and yeah. saying anything. I love it though. That's the purpose of music. Is like it's conversation starter. Mm -hmm. You know, if if people want it to be a sapphic love song, own that, own that, take yeah. it. I love that for me. I just never heard, heard it referred to as bologna. Usually roast beef. <laughs> I heard roast beef. Roast beef. Yeah, I heard roast beef. Yeah. Maybe fish. <laughs> All right. Not Money fish. long, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are done. <laughs> Money long. Let's get into your single. You want you want to hear uh, Made For You? This is Made For Me by Money Long. Thank Coming you. up next, right, right here, here on the breakfast. Money Long, we appreciate you for joining us. Absolutely. Keep doing your thing, Money Long. Absolutely. Congrats Thank on the you. Grammy. Yes. Everything. You are you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's Thank right. you. On the way, I got to come back when I you, bring the album. Damn, I'll, never mind. What? Because she said something earlier. Do, do, where do you think you are in the game? Like, what, like level? Because I was having a conversation this weekend just about, like, stars, superstars. Like, where do you think you... I'm on the way. I think I'm on the way to definitely carving my own seat, own lane, um, because I'm doing something that a lot of people are not right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it'll be very easy for me to own a space. I definitely think you're on the forefront of this new yeah. uh, renaissance of R&B that's happening. Like you and SZA, her, Summer Walker, Ari Lennox. Like it's a, definitely a 
R&B renaissance that I feel is being led by, mm-hmm. by, by black women right now. Yeah, no, we need some more guys. We got Brent Fayez, we got oh, Giveon, yeah. Gibe- I love Division. Gibe- right? yeah. yeah, we need we need that next Usher. Frank Ocean just came back too. Somebody he did. Frank Ocean. Yeah, he has music on YouTube. Like, oh yeah, well, new music on YouTube. So yeah, I gotta go check that out. Yeah, I'm loving it. I love. Do you like Khaled? Oh, Khalid. 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 I'm sorry. Not- I feel like Khalid, Khalid is more like in the pop. Yeah, I do. That's just my okay. opinion. All right, maybe I need to reevaluate. No, but <laughs> okay. like that real, like you know, yeah. like yeah. Jodeci, Case. Oh yeah, you want mm-hmm. that? You know, Ooh. Avant. People be, be sleeping hard, on Avant. Yeah, Avant was hard. Cause they, not feel, they ain't trying to feel it no more. They, you remember? You remember? Genuine was hoy, hoy, hoy. like we can't yeah, no, get we need nobody that. like that no more. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. not yeah. scared to be ugly singing. We need Skip Luther like Vandross. Yeah. Like we need yes. that. The That's value of baloney got to be increased. Oh, okay, so I'm serious oh because, because people don't value they don't value baloney and love like they do. Remember, mm. everybody there was a moment where it's like all of these dudes was singing like rappers. The way rappers talk about women, that's how a lot of the dudes were. Oh, so Bologna is women. Oh, okay. You said mm. that. You put us on to that. I was talking about vagina. Yeah. Vagina. Vagina. See, too old. Vagina. Girl, All right, vagina. made for me. Bologna. <laughs> vagina sound like bussy. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> See y'all later, guys. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's time for a positive note. What we got? I do, man. And I simply want to say, and I've said this before, but it's just a reminder. I need to remind y'all for 2024. Hope you heal is my new response to negativity. Whenever somebody's being negative towards you and they're projecting, just simply say to them, I hope you heal. Have a blessed day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?